Hey friends, so how to put this delicately? I f***ed up. Two weeks ago, I uploaded a video on who the greatest of all time might be from the Poi world, and a couple people pointed out some notable omissions that I made. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of Poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm revisiting major contributions to the Poi world, but through a different lens. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I have down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Pekka Pekkonen. Thank you so very much for your support for my work and my mission. Recently, I uploaded my assessment of who I might consider to be the Poi Goat or greatest of all time. And you know, there was something that all the people I featured had in common. I mean, I know it's hard to pick out. They do, they do have something in common, but for the life of me, I can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, they're all men. At the end of that video, I noted that fact myself, but then a commenter pointed out to me that simply pointing out that the list wasn't very inclusive in itself didn't address that problem, and specifically, there have been problems around the erasure of women and people of color in the flow community. And you know what? She's absolutely right. Not only that, but that probably also means we should have a conversation about why we exclude the contributions of these people from the hallowed annals of Poi history. Why aren't they the first people who come to mind? Tomorrow is International Women's Day, and it seemed like a good reason to try and do a little course correction and highlight some of the women in the history of Poi that I think have made a tremendous impact, why they frequently don't get the recognition they deserve, and how we all myself included, can do better in the future. And I also just wanted to real quickly thank Solara Salazar for calling me out on this. You are absolutely right in your criticism and I appreciate you standing up and saying it. Now please note, this is not meant to be the woman's goat list like I'm trying to do men's and women's events at the Olympics or anything. It's meant to be an exploration of the specific impact these specific women have had on our community, which I'd argue is as important as any of the contributions the men I listed in my other video have had. And just like the last video, I'm going to split this list into two groups of five. The first is meant to highlight contributions that are essential but frequently overlooked, which means it's about women that may not necessarily necessarily be the most advanced poi spinners, but have made impacts of incalculable value to the poi and flow arts world. The latter five spots are going to be devoted to women who have the chops and influence to be on the list that I shared last time. In fact, in retrospect, a couple of them absolutely should have been. So let's start with overlooked accomplishments. First up, I can just about guarantee that you have this person's influence in your very home if you're a poi spinner. In fact, you may be using her work almost every day and never stop to think about it. What am I talking about? Well, let me guess. You own at least one Flow Toys prop. And if you are not aware of it, Prisna, one half of the husband and wife team that runs Flow Toys, started out spinning poi. She and Sean came at the problem of creating high quality but low cost LED props when the props that they wanted to spin didn't really exist on the market and wound up starting a revolution. Next up on the list is going to be the first woman that I really looked up to and saw as a role model in the Flow community, and that would be Glitter Girl, or Issa. Yes, I know, we're going to get there. Trust me, I will not shy away from talking about her more problematic aspects. Why Issa? Well, quite simply, she's one of the greatest business minds the flow arts world has ever seen. She was operating a poi school in San Francisco for a decade before many of us even knew the art existed at all. If you did a Google search for anything poi related in the late 2000s or 2010s, I can just about guarantee that you would find a search result from her blog and website within your first few results. She also managed the Fire Expo for National Dance Day in San Francisco for years, exposing new people to the art and actually putting flow arts on a stage alongside dancers to announce that what we do is a legitimate art. She also has, to put it as charitably as I possibly can, very problematic views on transgender people and people of color. She is very loud, public, and aggressive in her stances, and it's led to many in the flow community, 
myself included, calling her out and distancing ourselves from her when it became clear that she was not interested in entertaining the notion that her actions were harming others. I went back and forth several times as to whether to include her on this list at all, and I thought bringing her up might actually be a chance to examine the question of how do we talk about problematic figures who've had a big impact on the flow world. Does even acknowledging those contributions further the harm and suggest that said contributions can outweigh harms? Do we include them in the conversation, but make sure we add context to their history and legacy? I actually legit do not know the answer to this question, and I'd really love some feedback from y'all out there on how to handle this kind of thing in the future. Leave me a comment and share your thoughts. Next up, I'm pretty sure that if you've ever had a conversation online about poi, there's a good chance that you're in the debt of Jilly B for the medium by which you conducted that conversation. For years, poi chat was the backwater of online poi conversations. It was a place where rampant misogyny, harassment, and intimidation were commonplace, and many of us who'd originally been involved with the creation of the group were at a total loss of what to do. And Jilly came in and made changes, Big changes, lots of changes. And while Poi Chat is far from perfect to this day, the fact that it's possible at all to have a civil conversation in that forum is thanks to her multi-year effort to stamp out harassment in the group. On a more personal note, as the person who started Poi Chat and then checked out when it became clear getting it to be a more inclusive and welcoming place was gonna require work that I didn't have the time or bandwidth for, Jilly came in and saved a project that has and continues to be a valuable resource to the entire Poi world. Thank you for that mountain of incredibly thankless work. Next up, I always talk about the Arizona transmission video as being a watershed moment in the tech point movement and Zan and Alien John's work being an exemplar of it. You know who else is featured in that video that I never talk about? Aurora. Not only is she featured in this hugely influential video, and I might add, is the only performer in it actually moving her feet, she's also one of the key figures in developing the modern style of partner poi. From slides and pivots to Denver's and foldouts, Aurora and her husband Zan basically set the stage for modern partner poi in the same way that Nick Woolsey did for modern poi spinning. The vocabulary they explored is so foundational that it's essentially considered synonymous with what partner poi is in its current form. Now for our final entry of flow artists who are deeply influential but don't get credit for it, I'm going to suggest Olive from Harmonic Threads. Stick with me here. Here's an experiment. Close your eyes and conjure to mind a prototypical flow artist. What are they wearing? I'm willing to bet you're envisioning somebody wearing something with panel work, asymmetric cuts, and voluminous shrugs. And you know what? That's a look that Olive's helped to popularize with her clothing lines. I genuinely think that Olive has probably done more than any other individual flow artist to create a specific style and look around the flow arts, to make flow artists immediately identifiable by what they look like as much as what they do. Tell me you do not have at least one friend with one of her pieces in their closet. There's even enough acknowledgement about her role that there are memes about it now. And before anybody tries to push back, Olive spins poi. I've seen her do it. But she absolutely belongs on this list, even if she didn't. If you've seen a person from across a room that you instantly thought might be your people and walked up to ask them whether they flow, I'd be willing to place odds that it's because they were wearing a piece that she either designed or influenced. Turns out there are a lot of contributions from women in our community that are so integral to what we do that we sometimes barely even notice it. And I think that should probably change. And now let's take a look at some trailblazers that give the boys a run for their money in the skills department. First up, we have to talk about Kate McCoy. So straight up, Kate is without a doubt one of the most virtuosic minds I've ever encountered in the poi world, and I think it's worth exploring exactly why she blows me and so many other poi spinners away. My last video on the GOAT featured quite a lot of spinners who focused on creating frameworks for understanding how poi works. And that's good in that it gave us ways to understand how things are interrelated and helped us predict things that we'd never seen before but it's also assigning a very rigid system to the art. Put simply, Kate is one of those people who is innovative precisely because she never attempted to create one of these systems. By never boxing herself in, she was always working outside the box. And that frequently meant that poi spinners like myself, who did try to establish these systems, were frequently baffled and in awe of what she came up with. And while she never wanted to be seen as the female tech spinner, she inspired damn near everybody else who will appear throughout the rest of this list in one way or another. For a person who didn't actively court being an inspiration, she did a pretty damn good job of it anyway. 
Next up, without a doubt the biggest complaint I got on my last video was the lack of poi jugglers on it. And no matter the names suggested in those discussions, somehow the one name that never came up is the one that I think most deserves the honor, and that's Cassandra Smythe. Cassandra is not only one of the few poi jugglers that I like to watch on a regular basis, she exemplifies something that few other poi jugglers do. Style. From the way that she spins to how she shoots her videos and even how she presents herself in said videos, Cassandra exemplifies a holistic approach to creating an aesthetic that few poi spinners can match, let alone poi jugglers. There's definitely a field of people that can juggle poi at this point. Cassandra actually makes watching it fun. Speaking of people who make it fun to watch poi, I would be remiss if I didn't feature my absolute favorite poi dancer, Zuz Shutova. There's quite a lot of poi spinners from Eastern Europe that have strong dance backgrounds ranging from ballet to modern dance, and Zuz is one of those that I see constantly pushing the envelope of how to fuse together modern dance and poi in new and exciting ways. To say nothing of the fact that she makes it look good. A lot of poi dance out there can live in this awkward space where a performer is trying to split the difference between whatever form of dance they're trained in and the poi spinning itself. Zuz is one of those few artists I watch who has the two so absolutely integrated into her style that it's difficult to see where one begins and the other ends. Highly recommended. Next up, one of the absolute queen bees of the past decade, Lore Yo. So for those of you who are not familiar with her work, let me catch you up on the many, many facets of the poi world that Laura has touched. In addition to being another one of those poi dancers heavily influenced by ballet who has thrown down the gauntlet on some absolutely incredible body tracers, she's also an important figure in the Russian poi scene. She teaches poi, hosts a flow festival called PoiCon that's attracted top shelf visitors from all over the world, and if I might say so, she's done it all with more style in her little finger than many of us Americans work years to cultivate. Laura is an absolute force of nature and one of the biggest reasons why the Russian poi scene has become the juggernaut not that it is today. And for my final pick, someone who once I thought of her for this list, I realized she absolutely should have been on the previous one too, Liz Knights. Liz is one of the poi world's absolute powerhouses of virtuosity. Stacking, body tracers, gunslingers, tosses, she's taken on damn near every trend of the past 10 years and made it her own. Possibly more than any other artist I've mentioned in either list, Liz is a poi spinner who makes absolutely everything she touches look like hers and hers alone. It's not just that she can do the hard tricks, she makes them conform to her style rather than the other way around. She was also the guiding force behind the Ladies of Tech Poi Project, an annual video compilation of women in the art all coming together to share some of their best work. And I do just want to spend a moment talking about why that project was so important. It's not just that Liz broke the glass ceiling of Tech Poi. She also curated a project that was built for and by women to bring more of them into this space on their own terms. I think many of us even that watched the compilation didn't spend nearly enough time thinking about how truly revolutionary it was. And we're gonna do a lightning round real quick because there were a whole bunch of other women in the flow arts that came up as I was compiling this list, but I've only got 15 minutes to work with. So some additional awesome women who've made or are making an impact in the poi world. Alexis May, Katya Stakhanova, Cassandra Tannenbaum, Luna Shackman, and Morgan Ezra Caldwell. Yowza! Hey, do you want to check out more of the work of any of these amazing women? I'll leave links to their social media down in the description. Did you get anything out of this video? Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to keep the conversation going and to help people find my videos. This video would not be possible if it were not for the wonderful support of all of these amazing people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Thank you one and all for your support. Do you like my videos? Do you like my flow sessions, vlogs, reviews, combos, and more? I'm on a mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their bodies and their brains. To help me do it, head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that at the link in the description or the card that just popped up if you're watching on YouTube. There you can get access to a whole host of rewards and help me along in my mission. Do check that out please and thank you. And now I'm going to take a break from the whole goat idea for a little while. 
Thanks again for the people who called me out on the last list and inspired this one. I appreciate y'all keeping me in check. I'm going to leave a link to a playlist of other vlogs I've done down in the description as well as up on screen if you happen to be watching this video on YouTube. Make sure to get outside to flow today and I'll see you with a new video on Wednesday. Peace.